This is FP3, June 2012, question 8. Now, this is another um, groups question, but this time involving vectors. And it says the set of matrices, sorry, not vectors, matrices, the set of matrices A, B, C, D, where A, B, C, and D are real, um, and A, D minus B, C equals 1. Now, um, and this forms a group uh, M under vector mul under matrix multiplication, and so then we're also asked to consider the group R, which is the matrices cos theta minus sine theta, uh, sine theta, cos theta. And they want us to prove that um, R is a subgroup of, so we've got R under multiplication. They want us to prove, first of all, that R is a subgroup of M. Now, um, let's first check that this condition AD minus BC equals 1 applies to our subgroup here. So I've got AD minus BC equals 1. Now, uh, in R, that's going to be cos squared theta um, minus minus sine squared theta, and that's cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. And we know that's always equal to 1, because that's the well, probably the first trig identity you ever learn. So um, we know that... Uh, R is actually a subset of M. So that's the first condition for it to be a subgroup. Next condition I want to know is whether R is closed on itself. So if we want to consider closure here, then uh, we have a little think about multiplying this. I've got cos theta minus sine theta, sine theta, cos theta, and multiply that by a different member of this group with um, psi rather than theta as the angle and that's going to get me, if I multiply this out, that's going to get me cos theta cos psi minus sine theta sine psi etc. Um, this trick identity with cos cos minus sine sine is cos theta plus psi so the end result the final matrix is going to be cos theta plus psi minus sine theta plus psi sine theta plus psi and cos theta plus psi which is an element uh, of R so it is closed So let's close there. Now, um, the identity matrix um, has got to be um, 1, 0, 0, 1. If uh, we have theta equals 0, then uh, cos theta equals 1. And sine theta equals zero, so um, theta equals zero gives one zero zero one, and there is an identity. So the identity, well, there is the identity. Right, then. Uh, we need to know that there are inverses in this uh, and that uh, all the inverses are contained properly in our uh, set of matrices R. So the uh, inverse in general is going to equal 1 over AD minus BC. D minus B minus C A, isn't it, for an inverse of uh, A, B, C, 
Do that's wrong. Uh, that's the inverse of um, there are other vectors. Yes, it is. Oh yeah, no, that's okay. No, it's quite right. Thinking. So um, that's our general inverse at that point. Um, in um, our in R, we know that AD minus BC has got to be one, so our inverse is going to be one over one. Um, then um, cos theta sine theta minus sine theta cos theta by applying these same rules to this. And so what we want to know, we want to check that this matrix, when we blob it with our original matrix, actually gives us 1, 0, 0, 1. So let's test that. Let's do uh, cos theta sine theta minus sine theta cos theta uh, multiplied by cos theta. My minus is right, yeah, minus sine theta, sine theta, cos theta. So we need to show that this is going to equal 1, 0, 0, 1. If we have a look at this, so that's cos squared theta plus sine squared theta, which gets us 1. And that's um, minus sine cos plus sine cos which uh, gets us 0, so minus sine cos plus sine cos 0. This one, minus sine cos plus sine cos 0, then plus sine squared plus cos squared is 1. So, bingo, uh, our inverse actually works. So each, for any element, uh, any element of R, cos theta, sine theta, minus sine theta, cos theta, its inverse is going to be cos minus sine, um, sine cos. Um, effectively, you can describe that as uh, use minus theta to get the inverse. Um, there's no need to check associativity because uh, we know that R is a subset of M, and if associativity works for the outer group, it will work for the inner group. Now, and so that's then, uh, so I'm going to write associativity can be uh, assumed because R is a subset of M. Therefore, R is a subgroup. Of M. Right, QED. Now, the second part of this was to say by considering geometrical transformations in the XY plane, find a subgroup of R of order 6. Um, give the elements of this subgroup an exact numerical form. So, uh, these matrices, um, cos theta minus sine theta and uh, sine theta cos theta, you probably know because the teacher will have shown you this happening, but these matrices are rotations. And um, so a subgroup, if we're talking about a subgroup of order six, what that means is that, that these rotations are going to be uh, form a cyclic subgroup, and order six has got to rotate us all the way around again back to where we started. And so that means uh, the uh, R to, if, if our subgroup forms uh, is E R R squared R cubed R to the four and R to the fifth and R to the sixth is E. It means that R to the sixth has to have, has to rotate it through two pi radians to get there. So um, 
in what that means then is that uh, r to 6 equals e and that's got to be 1 0 0 1 and it then means that uh, our angle theta has got to be 2 pi over 6 which is uh, pi by 3 because 6 rotations of pi by 3 will take us all the way around the loop again and so the generator of our subgroup is then cos pi by 3 minus sine pi by 3 sine pi by 3 and cos pi by 3 so and in terms of the group I listed up here that will be R there right um, and then for the rest of the group we're going to have theta equals k pi by 3 for k equal to naught um, 1 Two, three, four, five. Um, well, naught there obviously is our one zero zero one, and so the um, elements of our group. We can write them down. Well, we've known for a while that the identity is that. Then the next one. Well, we've got cos pi by three, uh, which is a half, isn't it? And minus sine pi by three is minus root three over two. Sine pi by three is root three over two, and cos pi by three is a half again. So that's two elements. Then r squared, which is then two pi by three. And it might be useful if you had a little sketch of the cos and sine here. But, uh, if we space yeah, I can sketch it down here if we have a look at this so we've got down here um, if that's, that's pi by 2 there that's pi 3 pi by 2 and that's 2 pi at that point so uh, a third is in here so our first one was there at uh, pi by 3 so cos of that we know is a half and then uh, the next one round is uh, 2 pi by 3 which then is going to be here isn't it so it's going to go down to there so we can see that that 2 pi by 3 is going to give us minus a half and sine minus sine 2 pi by 3 the sine it's going to overlay on the top like that, isn't it? So the sine of 2 pi by 3 is exactly the same as sine of pi by 3. So we end up with minus root 3 over 2, then root 3 over 2, and minus a half. Then um, the next one along is uh, 3 pi by 3, or cos pi. Well, cos pi is minus 1 and sine pi is 0, so we end up with a minus 1, 0, 0, minus 1 element. And then we end up with um, 4 pi by 3. So we're now over here in this zone of our um, cos curve. And down here, the cosines are the same but the signs are all going to be reversed because signs are now going to be negative. So we end up with minus a half and root 3 by 2, minus root 3 over 2, and minus a half. So you can see what I mean, the cosines are the same, but the signs are having their polarity reversed. And then the final one, 5 pi by 3, we're back up here in this zone here, so our cosines are positive again. Um, and but the signs are still going to be negative, so I'll be reversed. So end up with root three over two, and minus root three over two, and plus a half there. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six elements of the uh, uh, 
subgroup R uh, in exact numerical form. And that's the end of the paper. Thank you.